Well, Fast and the Furious keeps on going and going and going, because here's number eight. Let's talk about the fate of the Furious. Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duel, better known to you as the Big D, so I'm going to be bringing to you my final no review for now of the Fast and the Furious franchise, because after this, I'm going to take a little pause, and then I'll be coming back with my re-review of Hobbs and Shaw, and then the spoiler-free review of F9. So it's not over yet. So anyway, if you've not seen my reviews for the first seven movies, I advise you to click on the playlist card that's coming up right about now. And catch what you might have missed, or see them again if you'd like. Alright then, now, let's begin The Fate of the Furious, released by Universal in 2017, directed by F. Gary Gray, who I know that name, because I believe this guy's directed music videos, but I know he's also done some other things. Yeah, he's done several other movies. He's, also, he's done movies such as um, Friday, Set It Off, The Italian Job Remake, a Man Apart, which actually having the star Vin Diesel himself. Law Abiding Citizen, Be Cool, which that was the sequel to the movie Get Shorty. Stray Out Compton, and more recently, Men in Black International. Gee whiz. But anyway, he's directed music videos for tons of artists, as a matter of fact. Like Ice Cube and Cypress Hill. Outcast, Dr. Dre, heck, even Whitney Houston, TLC as well. All right, enough said. Uh, let's get into this here bit. The Fate of the Furious stars Vin Diesel along with Dwayne Johnson, Jason Stam, Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibson, Chris Lou, Chris Bridges, Scott Eastwood, Natalie Emanuel, Elsa Pataki, Kurt Russell, Christopher. Hivju and Charlie Starin. And this time, Dom Terrell has settled down with his wife Letty until cyber terrorist Cypher curses him into working for her and turns him against his team, forcing him to find Dom and take down Cypher. Anyway, well, the spy might not have gotten that much of a um, big. Well, bit like the last couple movies, the film got mixed reviews, though, but still, it became a big success. Anyway, here's our story. Following the defeat of Deckard Shaw and Mos Jakand, Dom Terrell and Lady Ortiz are on their honeymoon in Havana when Dom's cousin, Fernando, gets in trouble owing money to the local racer known as Raldo. Sensing Raldo is a lone shark, Dom challenges Raldo to a race, pitting Fernando's 1950 Chevy Fleet Line against Raldo's 1956 Ford Fairlane Crown Victoria. And wagering his own 1961 Chevy Impala, after nearly winning the race, Dom allows Raldo to keep his car, saying his respect is enough and leaves his cousin with his own car. The next day, an elusive cyber terrorist named Cypher curses Dom into working for her by showing him an unseen photo or video on her phone. Shortly afterward, the DSS agent known as Luke Hobbs recruits Dom and his team, comprising Lay, Roman Pierce, Teach, Parker, and Ramsey, to help him retrieve an EMP device from a military outpost in Berlin. During the getaway, Dom goes rogue, forcing Hobbs off the road and stealing the device for Cypher. Hobbs gets arrested and locked up in the same height security prison which holds Deckard Shaw. After Deckard and Hobbs both escape from prison, intelligence operative Mr. Nobody and his protege Eric Reisner recruit Deckard and Hobbs to help the team find Dom and capture Cypher. Deckard reveals that Cypher had hired his brother Owen to steal the nightshade device and Jakan to steal the God's Eye. 
Ramsey software program, you may remember. The team tracks Dom and Cypher to their place moments before the latter two attack the base, injuring the team and stealing God's eye. Roman suggests that they call Brian to help them, but Lay rejects the idea, since even though Brian, well, Brian O'Connor is mentioned, since even though Paul Walker is, was dead, as they promise not to bring him and Mia in any more dangerous activities for the sake of their children. When Dom questions Cypher's motives, she reveals that she has kidnapped Dom's ex-lover and DSS agent, Elian Naves, and their son, of whose existence Dom was unaware. Elena tells Dom that she wanted him to decide the child's first name, having already given him the middle name Marcos. In New York City, Cypher sends Dom to retrieve a nuclear football held by the Russian Minister of Defense. Prior to the theft, Dom briefly evades Cypher with the help of Raldo, and persuades Deckard and Owen's mother, Magdalene, to help him. Cypher hacks into the electronic systems of many cars, remotely controlling them via auto drive, causing them to disable the convoy so that Dom can take the football. The team intercepts Dom, but he escapes, seemingly killing Deckard in the process. Letty catches up to Dom, but is ambushed and nearly killed by Cypher's enforcer, Connor Rhodes, before Dom stops him. In retaliation, Cypher has Rhodes execute Alina in front of Dom, threatening to kill his son next. Now to the final act in the ending. You know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid ending spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, continue on after the five seconds. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Dom infiltrates a military separatist base in Russia to use the EMP device to disable their security and to disable a nuclear submarine, enabling Cypher to hijack it and attempt to use its arsenal to trigger a nuclear war. They are once again intercepted by the team who are able to shut down the sub's nuclear weapons and drive out toward the sea gate that would prevent the sub from leaving into open waters while being pursued by the separatists. Meanwhile, Deckard, who faked his death with the help of Magdalene Shaw, teamed up with Owen and, at Magdalene's behest, infiltrates Cypher's plane to rescue Dom's son. Once Deckard reports that the child is safe, Dom turns on Cypher and kills Rhodes before rejoining his team. Infuriated, Cypher fires an infrared homing missile at Dom, but he breaks away from his team and maneuvers around it, causing the missile to hit the submarine instead, causing an explosion that destroys Dom's vehicle. The team forms a vehicular blockade around Dom, shielding him from the ensuing explosion as the submarine is destroyed. Deckard reaches the front of the plane and confronts Cypher, who escapes by jumping from the plane with a parachute. Mr. Nobody and his protege visit Dom and his team in New York City to report that Cypher is still at large. Hobbs has his record cleared and is offered his DSS job back, but he declines to spend more time with his daughter. Deckard delivers Dom his son, putting his differences aside with Dom and Hobbs, and Dom names his son Brian and celebrates with his friends. End of story. So what did I think of The Fate of the Furious? Well, after I revisited it, I still got to say it's a pretty good blast. Almost as big a blast as the last movie was. Now, I recall going to the theater and seeing this because that was the first time I went and saw this. It's well to become a big movie, just like the previous one. The film went on to make over $1.2 worldwide, make it... The 19th film and the second the franchise after the last one to gross over a billion and became the third highest grossing film of 2017. Anyway, it did pretty well despite the mixed reviews. Even so, I will say that I really did enjoy this because it had so much good action 
And, well, it just provided a, all intense action in its story and what have you. F. Gary Grace direction was reasonably good. We we got Brian Tyler back on board to do the score for this, which that was good too. Now as for the cast, Vin Diesel back as Dom, very good. Dwayne Johnson back as Luke Hobbs, and Jason Sam back as Deckard Shaw, who a couple years later would get their own movie in The Fast and the Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw, which I already did a quickie review of, but ne but very soon you'll get a re-review of the film where I talk about the movie completely. Michelle Rodriguez is back as Lady, good, very good. Tyrese Gibson as Roman, and Chris Lu Chris Bridges as Teach. Pretty good. Playing, and once again playing Mr. Nobody is Kurt Russell. And Scott Eastwood plays Eric Reisner. Natalie Emanuel's back as Ramsey. And we have Charlize Theron on board as Cypher. Yes, and... Yeah, um, we had some pretty good performances. We also, well, playing the character of Magdalene Shaw, well, despite she was uncredited, was Dame Helen Mirren, who I believe we'll be seeing her again at nine. I'm pretty sure I saw her in the trailer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But also, I really did get to enjoy this movie. I think the final act had a lot of good, intense action, what have you. So, what can I say? This was another good movie in the Fast franchise. So, the question is, would I recommend The Fate of the Furious? Hell yeah! This is definitely worth looking into. I think you'll really enjoy it. While it might not have gotten much good word of mouth this last couple movies, but even so, it still proves that it's got lots of intense action that I think you will still get a major kick out of. Yeah. Story isn't too bad. The characters and cast, well, the cast of characters are really good. People play them, they're good too. The score by Brian Tyler is real good. Enough said. So let me know what you thought about The Fate of the Furious in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, be a part of the Big D Nation, and very soon, later this weekend, expect a re-review of Hobbs and Shaw, and then a spoiler-free review of F9. And then very soon, you'll get the ranking of the Fast and the Furious franchise. But join me next time when I bring to you a review of another good movie. Well, though I was originally going to do my Q&A this weekend, but I've delayed it to this to Wednesday, so be on the lookout for that. My next review will be The Great Muppet Caper, which is celebrating its 40th anniversary. So thank you for watching, and if you like this, check out these other reviews. In the upper right-hand corner, the upper left-hand corner, excuse me, my bad, is... My review of the third James Bond movie, Goldfinger. The upper right-hand corner is my review of the fourth Bond movie, that being Thunderball. Or if you want some more intense action that might have gotten a little mixed response, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of The Hitman's Bodyguard. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.